Hello everybody and welcome back. We have just killed a small group of hobgoblins. They seem to be new recruits. They were in fact wandering monsters. And we're outside this monastery with its ruined wall and various outlying buildings, trees, a large pool. I'm going to creep up to this gap in the hedge here. And the patrol did give up some info and they did describe this room as a barracks. This room is uh, having undead, didn't say what. And this is obviously the main temple. So we're going to go into the barracks room and much to our surprise it's completely in ruins. This is not what we were expecting. We were expecting to see some hobgoblins maybe eating their dinner or sleeping. So this place is in ruins despite the fact that we were told this was the barracks. And my only explanation is that these new recruits were given this info was a joke. Much the way, if you're a new person on a building site, you'll be told to go and buy a left-handed hammer or some tartan paint. And as you go off, everybody, everybody behind just laughs at you. Yeah, they were being hazed, I think the phrase is. So that's, well, that's a real disappointment. There's also absolutely nothing of any worth in it. But given the amount of time it took for us to get here, I will roll for a wandering monster check. And there isn't anything. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to move up to this here. It looks like a hedge maze from a distance because it's covered in green vines and things. It turns out as we get closer past this pool, it is actually ruined walls which are covered with moss and ivy, giving the effect that it looks like they are indeed just plants. We're hugging the wall. Let's see if we find any wandering monsters we don't we hide under this tree and we see what this place really is and we're going to investigate it lo and behold as we walk in we are rushed from all sides by eight giant centipedes any surprise yes they surprise us they were obviously hiding under the leaves and in between the ivy and the undergrowth. Right. Two on Carrick, two on Donard, two on Liz and two on Sylvia. I might as well do all at the same time. Apparently they don't do any damage. Apart from their poison throw. So here are the two on Donard. They miss. Here are the two on Carrick. They miss. Liz has an AC of four. And one hits her. She has to make a saving throw versus poison or suffer a nauseous effect. That's a 13 or more. And she gets a 12. We'll read up about that poison later. And two on Sylvia. And one hits her. What's her saving throw versus poison? It's 12. She's poisoned as well. Now, I did say I was going to have those berries cure this nausea. Well, I can't eat them in the middle of a fight. Centipede, comma, giant. Or become violently ill for 10 days, move at half speed, and will not be able to perform any other physical function. Well, that's extremely debilitating. Right, I'm going to use those berries to mitigate against it. It won't cure it entirely. Well, they're inoperable. So they're out of the fight. Right, it's our turn. So I'm afraid Malin is going to cast his sleep spell. This looks like they could get bitten again and again. And nine, they're half hit dice monsters. That's all of them gone to sleep. That's one sleep spell used up. We have six of these berries left and they're about to run out. They only last a day. So they won't heal any hit points if you're poisoned, but I'm gonna give Liz 
and Sylvia a minus two thaco for the rest of the day until we rest, which is quite crippling. Donard is going to take one. He is 22 HP. And he's back up to full health. So we've got two berries left and to eat during this day. Well, that was a bit of a shocking turn of events. We didn't expect to get rushed by insects. So we're gonna rest for a bit while well, wait for Sylvia and Liz to get over their nausea. And after we do that, the third place we were told of is here. While we are waiting, did anything happen? No, so we make it hugging the walls here. We've done this, done this, been through here, and we're going to creep along here, and we see a large pair of double doors that look like this. And if you remember, there was a cave of giant bats, and across the clearing from it was a statue. And this is the same creature as the statue. The statue had jewels for eyes, as they tend to. This one has its jewels still intact. And Carrick, well he can't climb up to get them, he's too short. The gems are about 12 feet high. But Liz can try and make a climb roll. And she's got a 90% chance of doing it. She's a bit nauseous. We'll give a 10% penalty. And she rolls a 1 as she scampers up that thing, like she herself is indeed a giant centipede. And she prizes the jewel out of the statue's eyes, but as she does so, these doors swing outward, and thus actually trapping her behind the doors. So she's kind of stuck there for this fight and outrush 12 skeletons. Let's see, they were fast enough to get surprise. They weren't, we surprised them. Well, we've got a cleric who is level four. Can he destroy undead at level four? Yes, he can. Right, so how many does he? Immediately holds up his holy symbol and cries out, be gone, and ten of them crumble to dust. Nice. Ah, oh, cool. And then we have Carrick. He's going to swing at one. Right, that's plus four is 14. AC five. Yep, he kills one easily. And Sylvia is going to take a pot shot. She's got short range, but nausea. That's minus one. Yep, she hits AC5. There's one with four HP. She kills that one. Twelve dead skeletons. And Malin pulls the door open and finds his sister with her nose a bit grazed behind it. She climbs down and thinks, a bit embarrassing. Carrick can kind appraise of these gems and they're worth a hundred gold pieces each. So we're going to enter into this room here. There's a statue facing us, and let's loot it in a minute. Right, we enter inside this extremely ruinous crypt. There's a broken, decayed statue here, and it again resembles that demon on the door. We're getting the impression that this monastery was not filled with beneficent monks and nuns. And we're faced with 12 rooms. It's going to take us 10 minutes for all six of us to loot each room thoroughly. So that is two wandering monster checks. So let's loot these six here. And by the time we're in here, has anything come in to see us? No. Did find something interesting here. All the tombs here have been broken open and they were raided long ago and most of the caskets have the wood has a rot in the way and any stone sarcophagi have broken lids and the place is just covered in dust but amongst the dust we find an extremely ornate dagger now that might be worth a lot of money or it also might be magical let's loot the rest of these six are we disturbed
No, again we're not. However, in the two hours that we've spent looting this place, that dagger is the only thing we find of any value. And we come outside, and it's getting into the middle of the day. So if we walk to here, we have four doors ahead of us that lead into this main structure. There are the main doors here. Let's sit here in the shade and eat something in the middle of the day and decide what we're going to do next. We're hidden in this little corner here, eating something in the middle of the day. Liz doesn't really feel like eating. After being bitten by those centipedes, she still has stomach cramps and it is affecting her bow arm. And the same can be said for Sylvia. Sylvia gets up and she wanders just to here out of sight of the others and she looks around and she looks at this avenue of cracked pillars with ivy growing up it and the ivy is making its way into the cracks of the stonework and pulling everything apart and these trees are quite dry and sparsely leaved. Sylvia reckons that they must be about just over 100 years old and that's her age and this building here it all seems to have its roof but again, the plants have taken over and they're slowly pulling it apart. And maybe it's the nausea from the centipedes or maybe it's just a bit more, but she starts to weep. Tears do run down her cheeks and her nose starts to sniffle. She has to wipe it on her sleeve. There's something about all of this desolation and ruin which has just got to her barrenness, the dried leaves, maybe it's the fact that it's clear it once had an evil purpose. But for some reason, even though everybody has been nice to her and she is in turn nice back to them, there's a sort of inner loneliness which this here whole place has brought out in her. Well, she hangs around here until it's time to dry her eyes and then she goes back to the others. Right, we cross over to here and we listen at the door. Liz hears nothing. We open it up and we find in a very large room. It's 100 feet by 40 feet and it's filled with bunk beds, dilapidated, rotten, crumbling bunk beds. In fact, in most of them, the top deck has fallen onto the bottom one. And we assume this is where the monks lived. We give it a cursory search, but find nothing. Come out and try this door here. And this is a refractory. It's got long tables. Again, rotten and fallen apart. There's no food. In fact, there's no metalware. Carrick notices that. At first we think it's suspicious that that has been taken. But it becomes... It becomes fairly obvious that, well, it's been taken to be smelted by the hobgoblins. And we have two doors, one here or one outside. We're going to try this outside one and we open up into another, another dormitory, smaller but much the same thing, silent, rotten and abandoned. This is a pretty desolate place, so we're going to go back in and listen at this door and Liz hears a sound she should be quite familiar with. The sort of squeaking and chirping of giant rats. There doesn't seem to be too many of them. So she reports that back to the others. Well, we'll take it on. We're here to investigate and find a way into the Hobgoblin dungeon. Maybe the stairs are in this room. Usual formation. We open up the door. They can't surprise us. Can we surprise them? And we do. Right, let's see if we can get two shots in on these guys. They have an AC of seven. R remember, there's plus one for short range, but minus two vaco for, for the nausea of the giant centipedes. So Sylvia, that's a 14, hits and kills one. Liz hits and kills another so there's that seems to be those two gone the boys well Donard and Carrick move up into the room and much to our surprise 
eight more giant rats come piling out of this hole. Let's see what their reaction to us is. Okay, that's uncertain. Well, yeah, they would be cautious. Animals tend to be. Let's roll again. Unfriendly. Okay, well, they have no interest in eating us. They're just going to scurry around the place. And in fact, they're probably going to start eating their two dead companions. As unappealing as it is, we're going to look through what is a pile of garbage in the corner. And we find some three gems, 60 gold pieces, 40 and 30. We find some small change, seven gold pieces, 12 silver, two platinum, and an arrow that has got, it looks like a silver tip to it. Well, that's an interesting curiosity. We'll keep that. We're gonna close this door. It's in a really bad state. The rats are gonna eat it. If the rats want to get out of here, they could eat through that door in five minutes. There's a door here. Let's listen at this door. And Liz doesn't hear anything. It's stuck. So let's see if Carrick can so shoulder charge it. And he can't. Well, he can try again. But if there's anything in this room, they will have heard it. Plus two for his strength. Yeah, the second time he bashes it, it opens up and we're in an 80 by 60, well, 55 foot room. What indeed is this place? It's a library. Thing in the center floor is a large pile of garbage. Well, Carrick, if you remember, has a spear plus one that he uses as a walking stick. So he's going to prod that pile of garbage and there's nothing in it. Well, Malin is immediately taken by all these rotten books. He hopes that there is something in here that might be of some use. Maybe there's something that will tell us about the library, but every time he touches a book it just crumbles into dust. Everybody will have a look and will throw some dice. If anybody throws a one, they find something. If Sylvia or Liz throw a two, they find something. Oh, look at that, and that's Liz's dice, and she throws a two. Yes, just by chance, she's the only person who finds something, and it is a scroll case. It's a tube made of silver. It looks valuable in itself. Well, she opens it up, and inside is a scroll. She can't read it, but Donard can. And it has got some clerical spells on it. It's got Cure Light Wounds times two. Good. Detect Magic and Bless. Well, there's another door here. Let's listen at it. And Liz doesn't hear anything. Let's try it. It's stuck. And Carrick fails to bash it. He's going to try again. He fails. Let's see if Donard can have a go. Nope, he fails. It might be locked. Let's see if Liz can have a go at picking locks. She fails to. If anything is in that room, well, it's not a secret, <laughs> okay. Let's try one last time. Okay, we're gonna abandon this room. It seems this door is stuck. Now it's a real shame. I will read what is in this room. No roof blocks the sun's rays from this part of the monastery where the atmosphere is peaceful and quiet. Around the perimeter of this restful spot, placed in an orderly fashion, are nine large birch trees. The ground is covered with a thick cushion of grass and flowers. In the centre is a pool, at whose south end a fountain splashes into a shallow bowl. Okay, there's a fountain at the south end, it's marked here as the circle. And from a spout in a bowl, water flows back into the long pool. The water's cool and crystal clear. The stones lining the sides and the bottom of the pool are glistening white and reflections of the birch trees dance in the shimmering surface. We are missing this, which is a shame. If we drink from the pool, we just get fresh water. If we drink from the fountain, there's a table of magical effects here of eight, and these are permanent. 
I'm actually not going to read out the effects of this fountain because you might want to play this yourself one day and that would spoil everything. So our characters don't get to go into this room. They failed to open this door. Right. So let's make our way out of here. We've been in here long enough. Let's roll for a wandering monster. Oh, <laughs> there is one. Right, what is it? It's Sturges. Oh no, sorry, we have a different table. Hobgoblins, what we would expect. One to six. Three of them. Right. Let's sort this fight out in a minute. Right, the party have come out of here. They're met with three hobgoblins. Who has surprise? We surprise them. Let's just finish them off. It's what we're here to do. Um, Liz. Mrs. Sylvia. Hits. Does four damage. One is down from five to one HP. Let's have Malin throw a dagger. <laughs> That's a double one. Okay. He whips out that tiger and nicks his earlobe. Right, let's have... Uh, Donard. Oh my god. And another kneecapper. And let's have... Carrick. Nope, that is AC7. They have AC6. Right. Let's do their turn. One on Donard. Misses completely. Good. One on Carrick. Hits AC3. That's a miss. AC2, sorry. And another one on Carrick. Misses. Right. Round two. And we get the initiative. Let's try again. Liz, please. Nope. Well, she tried. Sylvia, can you finish off the one that you hit? Yes, you can. And you do amazing damage. Shame it only had one HP left. Donard. Plus four, sixteen. Yes. And he kills another. There's one left. And Carrick wipes it out. So that's three dead hobgoblins. They didn't get a chance to react. They didn't get a chance for the morale checks. But going forward, if we ever meet another band of hobgoblins and their reaction to us is some way friendly on their reaction roll table, we're going to ignore it. We have no interest in friendly hobgoblins. It's not part of our mission and it's certainly not something that the Castellan expected of us. Even though there may be times, yes, when we can extract information from them. But in the main, no, we're not. We're here to kill them. So let us make our way round here to the front of the monastery. And we're faced with a large set of double doors. And that is where I'm going to leave it today. So I'll see you next time when this entire adventure on the hill really starts to kick off. Looking forward to it. So until then, see you.